Here's Alabama WX weather video for this Sunday morning, July the 7th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray coming to you just before 5 a.m. on this Sunday. And we already have the 4 a.m. Central Daylight Time advisory in on Tropical Storm Barrel. Still forecast to become a hurricane before making landfall in Texas early on Monday morning. Currently about 245 miles south-southeast of Matagorda, Texas. It's moving to the northwest at about 320 miles an hour. Uh, 320, I'm sorry, it's moving northwest at 320 degrees at about 12 miles an hour. The uh, lowest central pressure uh, reported by the hurricane hunters the last evening was 995 millibars. Now, you can see, though, you know, the storm had really strong convection around the center, you know, on Saturday afternoon, uh, but that went away, kind of waxed uh, and waned overnight. Now it's coming back. Uh, lots of big convection on the southern side there, some deep convection on the western side, and uh, I think the storm is in a position to begin to intensify. So, um, you know, that's what the Hurricane Center thinks as well, and, um, you know, that's going to be, uh, you know, what we really have to watch out for here over the uh, next uh, 24 hours uh, as this hurricane approaches, this tropical storm, uh, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, approaches the coast. But uh, let's talk about Alabama weather first. Uh, a few lucky locations got some nice rainfall on Saturday afternoon, including me, southern uh, Jefferson County, 1.89 inches of rain. Boy, uh, that was just a godsend. Uh, over in northern Shelby County, on the other side of the county line, Indian Hills area, got some uh, decent rain uh, up around um, Donovan, northeast Shelby County. They got a couple inches, it looked like, on radar. And you go down to around um, Sylacauga, uh, western Talladega County, they actually picked up uh, some uh, much, much needed rainfall, maybe as much as three to four inches of rain. Of course, a lot of Alabama sliding into drought. Our uh, friend Brian Mears on his Facebook page this week uh, had a rant about drought being so terrible he's right one of my least favorite too brian um and uh, he said these you know widely scattered showers and thunderstorms just won't cut it well uh we'd look to the skies hoping barrel would uh, give us something you know to um uh, look forward to in terms of rainfall for alabama it doesn't look like that's the case uh here's the upper pattern across north america uh on this sunday morning uh, we see the uh, tropical storm there east of Brownsville, east of Matamoros, getting ready to make its move to the north. And there's the reason that it actually turned to the north. It's this uh, big trough in the central part of the country. Um, it developed as forecast, and it's going to absorb the tropical cyclone. As its remnants uh, move to the northeast, it'll move through western Arkansas and uh, into uh, Missouri then Illinois and the Great Lakes uh, weakening as it goes by the end of the week. The ridge of high pressure comes back over much of the country, including Alabama and the Deep South. The uh, subtropical ridge to the east, the Bermuda Azores High, will uh, position itself so that we're in a very moist flow, uh, especially in the week two period. Some lowering pressures there by Thursday the 18th mean perhaps some increased showers and thunderstorms for Alabama. And um, we'll look at some rainfall amounts that may come from that. This is the surface map on this Sunday morning showing uh, the, what the, the GFS predicts to be showers and thunderstorms that will develop. Uh, in the convergence zone there north of the hurricane along a boundary that extends from uh, central and southern Alabama back to the west. Uh, those showers and thunderstorms will uh, form during the morning. They are from eastern Texas, across northern Louisiana, into western Mississippi. And meanwhile, the uh, tropical storm will move to the north, intensify, become a hurricane by late uh, this afternoon or tonight. It should be uh, approaching the Texas coast there around 10 p.m. Showers and thunderstorms uh, predicted by the GFS to still be occurring during the evening hours over southern Alabama. But we'll check that with the HRRR and see what it thinks. Matter of fact, I actually think I have uh, the zero. Well, I don't quite yet. We'll stay with the zero Z run because it goes all the way out. Um, and then we'll kind of look at some of the closer ones. But showers and thunderstorms develop uh, around 4 p.m. here on this Sunday. Um, and, you know, they'll be moving across the area for a while. Um, but that doesn't look quite as widespread as what the uh, GFS was talking about. Here's the zero six run, uh, which goes out 
uh, further, showing those showers and thunderstorms. Moreover, South Alabama there, probably a bit of an extension of uh, the uh, tropical wind field bringing the uh, moisture further north into Alabama, but it dies out pretty quickly this evening. And then on Monday, you can see the uh, tropical the hurricane uh, weakening to a tropical storm and a tropical depression uh, through the afternoon hours as it moves through eastern Texas uh, and then into southwestern Arkansas. But not much in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity tomorrow either uh, across Alabama. And then after that, boy, it really does get scarce. Um, you know, this is that depiction into Tuesday showing maybe some showers and thunderstorms across the northern part of the state, a little convergent zone, sort of the outer feeder bands of the, the uh, tropical system, uh, you know, create some convergence there over north Alabama. But that doesn't look too likely. Uh, this northeast to southwest band of convergence, on, you know, Tuesday night into Wednesday, uh, but it weakens and pushes to the south as the um, counterclockwise flow around the low pressure system pushes drier, slightly cooler air uh, into Alabama, um, you know, behind it. And that's going to really dry us out for Wednesday. We'll pay the price Thursday, dry, Friday, dry, into Saturday. Maybe a few showers and uh, thunderstorms start to reappear over South Alabama as the subtropical ridge begins to really flex its muscles. And uh, then we see as we go into uh, Sunday the 14th, uh, you know, there'll be a little bit more in the way of rain. And it uh, looks like that could be the same trend. Monday looks pretty dry there, but showers and thunderstorms become sort of a fixture uh, as temperatures heat well into the middle and upper 90s. More high moisture levels are there and the atmosphere just sort of bubbles over every day. But we're way out there in uh, the week two period. Here are those temperatures off the National Blender models. 94 uh, today, the average. 95 tomorrow. We cooled down just a little bit for the first part of the week, but you can see by the weekend things are heating up again. Overnight lows are fairly consistent in the lower and middle 70s. Uh, daytime highs will eventually be in the middle and upper 90s, perhaps touching 100 in some areas. This is the GFS total precipitation out through 96 hours. Eh, maybe helping a little bit. You know, we might pick up a half to one inch across uh, some lucky spots in central Alabama, but I don't think that's going to make Brian very happy. And uh, it probably won't make the drought monitor very happy either. But if you go out to the end of the period, out to 16 days, you can see um, all that, that, you know, eventual troughiness and all of that heat and moisture uh, may combine some pretty decent amounts, getting us above normal for the two weeks uh, as we get on out here. Uh, you, know, you see some isolated amounts over four, you know, inches. Will that happen? Don't know. Will it happen in those spots? No, probably not. But um, you see there some pretty decent amounts and uh, some fairly normal amounts, you know, falling around one to one and a half inches in the I-65 quarter. So that's kind of a look at uh, Alabama's weather early on this Sunday morning. Now I want to kind of take you uh, into the hurricane um, just a little bit, talk about uh, you know, what's going to happen with it, uh, you know, over the next uh, several days, well, the next couple of days, really. Um, I'm in Port Lavaca, Texas tonight. Uh, I've come over, uh, you know, kind of drove over through Louisiana um, and into, um, uh, you know, into southeastern Texas uh, today. And uh, we saw a lot of beautiful territory, uh, places like Cocodry, Louisiana, um, you know, which has been no stranger to, to storms and, uh, you know, has had some flood mitigation efforts. But, you know, the, the, all the homes are 30 feet off the ground on pilings. It's just amazing seeing the scars uh, of the past. Same thing uh, going over to um, Cameron, Louisiana today, of course, which has the legacy of 1957's Hurricane Audrey uh, plus Rita. Uh, you know, in 2005, and then most recently, Hurricane Laura back in 2020. In 2020. Um, you can see those scars curve over through Port Arthur and all of its industry and down to um, High Island. You see there's no beach left. It's, you know, 10, 20 feet of beach and, you know, concrete barriers, uh, you know, kind of trying to keep the road in place. Uh, a lot of it was washed out you know, in, in recent hurricanes. So then you get over to the Bolivar Peninsula, you know, where a Category 2 hurricane like Ike uh, killed a lot of people 
uh, just leveling uh, all those beautiful beach homes, you know, it left one standing, kind of like Hurricane Michael uh, in Mexico Beach. You know, just a reminder, you know, that a well-built home can withstand, but now most of those homes are on 25, 30 foot pilings. It's just um, really crazy uh, what, um, you know, folks will do to enjoy our beautiful uh, coastlines. Uh, this is the official track of the Hurricane Center. It shifted just a little bit to the east. It was skinny black line was right through me, Port Lavaca, um, you know, that on the last couple of runs. And now it shifted just a tiny bit, um, you know, more over uh, to the eastern side of Matagorda Bay, um, Bay City, um, Palacios, a lot of industry in those areas. I'm really concerned about them, too. Because uh, there's, you know, a lot of water that um, could end up in there, depending on where the, uh, you know, where the center makes landfall. That center uh, point is is still very, very important. Uh, you know, the changes with this advisory are that the hurricane center has extended the hurricane warning uh, to San Luis Pass, which is the western side of Galveston Island. Uh, they've extended the hurricane watch uh, to include Galveston Island. So, you know, they're not out of the woods yet. Tropical Storm Watch has been issued east of High Island uh, to Sabine Pass. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the Hurricane Center's hedging its bets. The storm may continue to edge a little bit to the east. You know, I keep thinking we've got it nailed, and we might now, but, you know, who knows. But right now we've got a hurricane warning from Baffin Bay to St. Louis Pass, and um, Hurricane Watch on either side of that, bookending it uh, from the Rio Grande to Baffin Bay and from San Luis Pass to Galveston Island. Of course, tropical storm warnings are in effect uh, south of Baffin Bay to the Rio Grande, uh, east of the uh, San Luis Pass to High Island in Texas, um, and um, then also a storm surge warning is in effect from the north end of Padre Island uh, all the way around uh, to High Island, which of course includes the three major bay uh, complexes on the Texas coast. Uh, Corpus Christi, Matagorda, and Galveston, and uh, even Storm Surge Watch all the way over uh, to um, all the way to Sabine Pass, with one to three foot surge expected as high as as far east as Cameron in Louisiana, where we were earlier today taking the um, uh, taking the uh, ferry across and to um, you know. Uh, Holly Beach, Johnson Beach, and all those beautiful communities right there along the Gulf. We're into some big, gorgeous thunderstorms and some really, really heavy rain. These are the tracks, the global models, all tightly clustered. Um, you know, we're getting these little, small, minute changes in the track. They can have a big difference, um, you know, in the, where the most impactful weather falls. Uh, of course, you know, the, the cone is where that uh, center can end up 60% of the time. This is um, the GFS and its ensembles, still tightly clustered. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to have a couple of those members over there in northern Mississippi. We won't complain if that happens. Same with the European. Give us an outlier that might make it into North Alabama. And nobody would be complaining over here. Now, the only track, well, really a couple of models are up in Category 1 status, making a hurricane. The official, you know, track from, or the official intensity forecast from the Hurricane Center now, of course, calls for it to become a hurricane later today, um, you know, by late this afternoon or early this evening. Now, the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds from the 4 a.m. advisory still basically unchanged. Uh, along the Texas, uh, Louisiana coast, it's around 8 p.m. tonight. That means, uh, you know, folks in this area, in the hurricane warning area, tropical storm warning areas, you know, are going to want to have their preparations wrapped up by sunset tonight. And uh, that's good news that they have today to do that. The peak storm surge forecast uh, was up a little bit uh, this after or Saturday afternoon to four to six feet uh, there from east of Corpus Christi uh, to San Luis Pass on the western end of Galveston Island. Still expecting three to five feet uh, there into Galveston Bay, three to five feet into Corpus Christi Bay, um, back up to Kingsville, and uh, two to four feet down to the uh, mouth of the Rio Grande. Uh, same thing from High Island over to Sabine Pass, uh, two to four feet, one to three feet in Sabine Lake, uh, and 
the coast there west of uh, Cameron, those places I was today, uh, Johnson Beach and Holly Beach. Now, rainfall, of course, is going to be a problem. Um, four to 12 inches is going to fall over a wide area. Uh, areas from Corpus Christi to Lake Charles, including Houston, you know, are going to get at least four inches. The area near and east of the center at landfall, uh, most likely Matagorda Bay or just to the east of it, curving up and around uh, to the east of I-35, east of San Antonio and Waco, uh, east of Dallas to the Texarkana area, uh, you know, could see uh, something on the order of four to eight inches. So we'll, you know, be watching that uh, very, very carefully. And also the other thing that we kind of have to keep an eye on is, you know, I, the, I'll the track all the way up into the, the Great Lakes, um, uh, because, you know, some of that, some of that precipitation could be very, very heavy too. But I want to focus on one uh, scenario for you. This is the HAFS-B, one of the two new NOAA hurricane models. And um, I think this one has a really good handle on what's going to happen. So I'm going to share it with you directly. Um, start off in the morning, you know, that's a little high maybe right now. We don't know until we get out there. The Hurricane Hunter's got a couple of planes heading out right now. 987 millimeters. Um, go through the day. Um, the storm is still organizing. You know, the pressure drops, um, you know, still hanging around there around, you know, 990. 987, 987, 990, 986, 984, but then it starts to intensify during the overnight hours. This is 4 o'clock on uh, today, 984 millibars, uh, you know, with those winds beginning to approach strong tropical storm force, you know, 60 knots, it's right at 70 miles an hour. Um, as we go down to, you know, as we get to 7 p.m. tonight, 981 millibars, the uh, maximum winds now. Uh, increasing to about 90 miles an hour with pressure 977 by 10 p.m. Then 973 uh, by 1 a.m. You can tell the storm is intensifying and it's now approaching 100 miles an hour. And sure enough, it makes landfall right at 970, 969 millibars with uh, top winds of right at 100 miles an hour. I'm reminded and I warn you to think about uh, Hurricane Alicia, 1983. It um, produced... Uh, 115 mile an hour winds, category three hurricane at landfall, but it uh, pres its pressure dropped 40 millibars in 40 hours. We thought that was amazing uh, back then, and uh, we don't want that same thing to happen here. This is not a Harvey, um, although it's going to have very impactful storm surge. Uh, storm surges may be on the same order uh, in some of these places like Rockport. And, of course, they were very devastating back then. Alberto, earlier this year, made landfall in Mexico and produced um, significant storm surge along the middle Texas coast. So, you know, we're going to have a lot to uh, watch and, and look at tomorrow uh, into Monday. Well, I guess tomorrow is Monday, since I'm recording this, finishing this recording at 5.15 on Sunday morning. Well, that's a very comprehensive look at Beryl how it ties into our weather in Alabama uh, or not. And, um, you know, I'll have a, a lot of notes on the blog today, perhaps another video later in the day, just to update you on what's going on, especially around four o'clock when we get the hurricane center package, uh, have, um, you know, an update on the forecast, give you radar updates throughout the day back home to make sure. And I'll be right here in the Matagorda Bay area to uh, record and experience the passage of what will likely be Hurricane Barrel on Monday morning. Monday night, Weather Brains talk to uh, Charles Peak. Uh, you know him from the Weather Channel. He's a great chaser. He's a super, super nice fellow. We already had him booked for uh, Monday night. Uh, boy, how appropriate was that. So uh, may even find a way to meet up with him somewhere um, as the storm uh, moves off quickly into northeast Texas. Weather Brains, the weekly netcast that's all about weather. Well, until I get to talk to you again later today or see you around hanging around on the blog, uh, do as I always tell you, go outside, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.